showing off. It is narrated on the authority of Amir al Mukminin, Abu Hafs, Umar ibn al Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, say, Actions are judged by intentions. So each man will have what he intended. Thus, he whose migration was for Allah and his messenger, his migration is for Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was for some worldly benefit or for marriage, his migration is for that which he migrated for. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode of Purification of the Soul. I'm your host Abu Abdus Salam and we have with us in the studio our guests Baha, Muhammad and Gulraz. Today we're going to be talking about a very important topic and it is a topic that every single Muslim must learn about. And in particular those who are in quotes religious should know more about this topic. It's something that every one of us needs to deal with in our own uh, souls. And the importance of this topic can be seen in a hadith reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that he heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that the first to be judged on the day of resurrection will be a man who had died as a martyr. He'll be brought forward and Allah will remind him of the blessings that he had bestowed upon him. And the man will then acknowledge them. He'll then ask him what? Did you do with these blessings? The man will reply, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. Allah will then reply, you have lied. You fought so that people would call you, would call you courageous and they have done so. And then a command will be given that about this man and he'll be dragged on his face and thrown into the hellfire. The second, a person, the next man will be one who had acquired and imparted religious knowledge. And he read the Quran, recited the Quran. He will be brought forward and Allah will remind him of his blessings, of the blessings that he had bestowed upon him and the man will acknowledge them. Then he will ask him, what did you do for those blessings? What did you do with this, these blessings? The man will reply, I acquired religious knowledge and taught it and, and recited the Quran for your sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, you have lied. You acquired knowledge so that the people would call you a scholar and you recited the Quran so that they would call you a reciter and they have done so. And a command will then be issued about him, and he'll be dragged on his face and thrown into the hellfire. Thirdly, a man whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made affluent and rich, and to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given plenty of wealth, he will be brought forward, and Allah will remind him of the blessings he had bestowed upon him. And the man will acknowledge these blessings. Allah will ask him, what did you do with those blessings? And the man will reply, I did not leave any of the ways that you liked wealth to be spent, except that I spent it uh, for your sake. Allah will say the same thing to him. You have lied. You did it so that people will call you generous and they have done so. And then a command will be issued about him and he will be dragged onto his face and thrown into the hellfire. This hadith, which is reported by Imam Muslim, shows that the first people to be judged on the Day of Judgment are three people who on the face of it would engage themselves in some of the most virtuous acts of worship fighting for Allah's cause, learning, teaching and reciting the Qur'an and teaching and learning religious knowledge and spending money for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. However, they accompanied their acts of worship with one major flaw, one major sin, that of ostentation or showing off. Now this ostentation or showing off rendered their actions void and fruitless. In fact, it led the people who performed these acts of worship to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. And this is the next disease that we'll be discussing. Riya in Arabic. Riya, which means to show off or ostentation. Now the Prophet sallallahu said that the thing that I fear most for my ummah is the hidden shirk. Al-shirk al-khafi, the hidden shirk. It was then said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the hidden shirk? He replied, it is ostentation, riya. Allah, the Exalted and Most High, will say on the day that His worshippers will be recompensed for their deeds, go to those whom you wanted to show your deeds to in the worldly life. 
and see if you find with them any reward. So this hadith shows very clearly that the Prophet ﷺ feared most for his ummah uh, ostentation. For a person to do religious deeds, to do acts of worship, which should only be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to do them for a worldly cause, or for, to, to, to show off ostentatiously. Why is it that the Prophet ﷺ feared most for his ummah this deed, ostentation? It's the one thing that uh, can easily, that is easy to fall into and can easily ruin deeds. And it's shirk. And it's shirk. It is actually shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yusha. That Allah never forgives shirk. Allah never forgives someone associating partners with Allah. But He forgives other than that to whomsoever He wills. And also because it's so easy to fall into. It is hidden shirk. It's something hidden. It's very easy. And thirdly, because this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, or rather this is something that uh, shaitan, he attacks the Muslims with. It's not necessarily the kuffar. He attacks the Muslims with this deed in particular. Although he also uh, drags people into hypocrisy, even major hypocrisy, that takes a person outside the fold of Islam, uh, using this ostentation. So ostentation is a great and evil disease. And the Prophet ﷺ feared for his ummah most that this disease would afflict them. And this shows how dangerous riya or ostentation is. It also, is. it also shows how difficult it is for one to ensure that his deeds really are for Allah's sake. And this is why one of the scholars of the past, one of the Salaf, he said that, and his name was Sahal ibn Abdullah, he said there is nothing more demanding upon the soul than achieving sincerity. How many times have I tried to remove the inclination to show off from my heart, except that it sprouted in a different color. And this is someone from the Salaf, someone from the early Muslim uh, generation of scholars and righteous people. And yet, if they found it difficult, then imagine how much more serious, seriously we should take this disease of riya. And furthermore, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, before, after the Prophet ﷺ died, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to one of the companions, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he mentioned the names of the hypocrites. Now what do we know about Umar radiallahu anhu? That he was the second greatest companion. He was the second greatest companion. In fact, he's the second greatest person of this ummah after the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And the greatest is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What else do we know about Umar radiallahu anhu? He was the second Khalifa. He was the second Khalifa of Islam. He was the second Khalifa of Islam. He narrated a number of hadiths. He produced uh, you know, a great Khilafah that spread from east to west in his time. Now Umar ibn al-Khattab, the one whom the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always say about him, I, Abu Bakr and Umar. Me, Abu Bakr and Umar did such and such. I, Abu Bakr and Umar are going to such and such a place. And Ali radiallahu anhu, when Umar radiallahu anhu was dying, this is what he remembered about what the Prophet sallallahu would say about Umar. That he would always say, I, Abu Bakr and Umar. He would join the three of them together as a group of people, friends, companions. He was a clo- one of the closest companions to the Prophet sallallahu He was guaranteed paradise. He's from the Ashra Mubashara, the ten who were guaranteed paradise by the Prophet Muhammad But yet, what did he say to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu? He asked Hudayfa, O oh Hudayfa, did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa count me from among the hypocrites? Allahu Akbar. And wallahi, this really is something that we need to ponder over. This is something that we need to think about. Because... A person can never be secure and safe from the sin of ostentation. And if a person thinks that he's safe from ostentation, from riya, then it is likely that he is most drowning in this disgusting and filthy disease. And even though this disease is so hard to cure, it is nonetheless imperative for a person to make sure that any religious deed that he does must be for the sake of Allah alone. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ And they were not ordered except to worship Allah sincerely in their, uh, in their religion. He also says, Do not render your charity in vain by reminders of your generosity or by injury like him who spends his wealth to be seen of men. So this ayah clearly shows that if someone does any act of worship for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his deed will be rendered useless, fruitless and invalid. And this point is further elaborated in a hadith Qudsi. And what is a hadith Qudsi? It's a hadith, uh, it's the words of Allah ta'ala that he said to Prophet Muhammad but it's not counted as part of the Qur'an. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa relates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says such and such and such and such. But it is not from the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an, if you recite it, you can recite it in salah, you can recite it to get reward. Whereas hadith Qudsi is like another hadith, except that the Prophet ﷺ is relaying or relating from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am the one who is the most free from any need or want of partners. He who does a thing for the sake of someone else besides me or alongside me, I will discard him and his polytheism. He's ascribing partners to me. So, in this case, if a person intends other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any act of worship, not only will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discard that act of worship, reject it, render it fruitless, not only will he do all this, but also this deed will count against him on the day of judgment and the person is liable for punishment for that same deed. And this can be seen in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who acquired sacred knowledge which should be acquired to gain the pleasure of Allah but he does this to secure worldly comfort will not smell the fragrance of paradise on the day of judgment. And this shows the importance of knowing about this sin, about its causes, about its effects, and to know how to cure this, these, this disease from oneself. Insha'Allah, we'll begin with mentioning some of these points after the break. Be proactive. Dr. Haitham Al Haddad teaches us how to take a conscious control over our life, set our goals, and work to achieve them in Islam. Take firm steps towards your future, be positive, and be proactive. Every single Muslim needs to have in order to be an effective person. So proactivity uh, in Islam, how to serve our religion and how to serve uh, our life and our guides through all of this. The proactive person is always motivated. The proactive person always have high ambition. The proactive person, he will not lose his time. He will not waste his time. The proactive person is a generous person. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We were talking before the break about riya or ostentation or showing off. And we're talking about how disgraceful this sin is. And to further elaborate this point, um, it should be known that the one who shows off will also be disgraced on the day of judgment. So not only will his deed be rendered void and fruitless, and not only will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish this person for that deed, but furthermore the person will uh, be disgraced on the day of judgment. Jundub radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, he who acts to show off, Allah will disgrace him on the day of resurrection. And he who does good, good deeds so that people may hold him in high esteem for the sake of people, then Allah will expose his hidden intentions before the people on the day of resurrection. 
So it's important to understand all the different types of ostentation from all the different angles, all the types of showing off. And we, look at, we can look at ostentation in different ways with respect to what the person is aiming, with respect to the essence of the act of worship or of its qualities, and with respect to the reason why people show off. So these are three different categories or three different taxonomies of ostentation. Now, there are four levels of ostentation with respect to one's intention. The first of this, first of these is that the person solely aims other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when doing this act of worship. In other words, if he was left alone, he would never do this act of worship. This could be like the one who prays only when with other people. If they were not there, then he would not pray. And he may even pray without wudu, as his sole goal is to show the people and not to receive any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What other kind of examples could we, could, a, could we give about a person who does this solely for the sake of Allah, only for the sake of Allah? Perhaps a person that's reading Qur'an only to show off maybe his voice or his recitation. Yes, and he actually, the point here is that the person's goal is solely for the people. And he has no reason whatsoever to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't even do it as an act of worship. Yeah, for example, uh, a person only, uh, he said only prays when, when people are looking. Yeah, when a person who, who doesn't pray his obligatory prayers, but he only, does, he only does it when people are there. One of the common ones also is a person who gives charity. Another one, a person who gives charity. charity. Or a person who makes known that he's fasting, and he may not even be fasting. He may well be privately eating. This person, he, his goal, his sole goal is to show the people uh, that he's doing these good deeds. Even though he has no intention whatsoever to receive any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, if, he was, if it was left to him, then he would not have done this good deed. In fact, he doesn't actually intend, uh, he has no intention whatsoever uh, he doesn't intend whatsoever to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get any reward from Allah at all. And this is the greatest and most severe type of ostentation. And the person who falls into this category is earning the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deeds will be totally in vain. The second type of ostentation uh, in this uh, taxonomy is that the person does intend reward from Allah, but his intention is weak inside him. His intention is weak. So instead, what actually motivates his worship most is that people are watching him. So if he was alone, his aim of receiving reward from Allah would not actually motivate him enough to produce that act of worship. So actually what is motivating him is not his you know, trying to seek reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is actually motivating him is his desire of people watching him. But he does, along with that desire, he does actually have, uh, you know, some aim to get some reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this, this aim, uh, this intention is weak. This intention of pleasing Allah is weak. And his ostentation, uh, only his ostentation would prompt him to actually perform and produce uh, the action. This type of person is not far off from the previous type. He will be earning also, he will also be earning the wrath of Allah. And his deeds are also rendered null and void. Okay, so we see the difference between the first type and the second type. The first type is the one who, he solely, he produces the very action for the sake of other than Allah. And he has no uh, reason whatsoever, he has no intention whatsoever to receive reward from Allah. As for the second type, then he does have an intention of receiving reward from Allah. But this intention is weak. And what really produces the action is... Uh, is, is this ostentation, this riya. These are the first two categories. After we have a look at some comments uh, from some people on the street, inshallah we'll return to this uh, issue of different types or levels of ostentation with regards to one's uh, sole intention. It is uh, when a person is trying to show off a group on a group of people that, and always tries to, um, to talk about himself in the good ways only. Ostentation that man can be uh, proud of himself, uh, talk uh, always about uh, what he's doing, uh, about uh, uh, his uh, doing in his life uh, projects. A person who desires to see, please people, 
It's obviously like a dream because pleasing people is very hard and people never get pleased. Like the story of Goha. Uh, people are very hard to please. Uh, so it's it needs like a miracle to please people. Uh, I think it should be uh, pleasing God, not pleasing people. And also... Um, It should be praying is something between you and God, not between anyone else or uh, tell anyone else that you're going to pray. Because they have high self-confidence and they feel by doing so they will gain respect by actually uh, the other people don't uh, respect them by doing uh, showing off. Yes. So here uh, we were discussing about the types of ostentation with regards to a person's uh, intention with regards to his intention or his goal or aim. And we said that the first type is the one who, uh, who, who, who does an action solely for the sake of other than Allah. And the second type, he does the action primarily for other than Allah, but he does have a weak intention to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this person, as we said, is similar to the first person in that his deeds are rendered null and void. The third type of intention is when a person intends the reward from Allah, but he also intends to show off. And these two types of intention are equal in the person. So if one of these intentions were not present, he would not be able to produce the act of worship. In other words, both intentions combined produce this act of worship. Looking at the text of the Quran and Sunnah, it seems that again, this person's deeds are in vain and he'll be earning Allah's wrath. So, on the one hand, he wants the people to see his deeds. And on the other hand, he also wants the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does intend Allah. And these two intentions are equal. But if you took one of these two intentions away, the other intention would not be strong enough to motivate the person to produce this action. And so therefore, this person, uh, the stronger opinion of the scholars is that this type of deed is also rendered null and void. Although some scholars have said that each evil counter, each intention counter, counteracts the other. The good intention cancels out the bad intention, and the bad intention cancels out the good intention, and therefore there's no sin and there's no reward. But the stronger opinion seems to be that the person, since he is still performing ostentation, since he is still ostentatious, then he still is receiving a sin in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth type of person is that his intention for showing off is less than his intention for seeking a reward from Allah. That is, if there are no people present, he would still be motivated by his correct intention to perform this act of worship. Conversely, his ostentation alone would not produce this act of worship. So showing off does not produce this act of worship for him alone. If there are people present, but he doesn't want to intend Allah, then this would not be sufficient enough to motivate this uh, act of worship. This type of person, he'll be rewarded for the essence of his action, because the essence is for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but his reward will be deficient. And or he is liable to be punished according to the weight or level of ostentation in his action, according to the ratio of ostentation of, it, of his action. If it's more, then he's punished more. And also the reward of his action is more deficient, and so on and so forth. And so, the, uh, this type of person, he, uh, he is the least of all of the, type, the four categories of people to earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all types of ostentation are dangerous. Why? Because as we mentioned earlier, it is shirk. It is shirk khafi, it is hidden shirk. Why is it so difficult to see in oneself this hidden shirk? Why is it so hidden? Because it's a feeling from inside, so it's something that might naturally come about when people are looking. Because it's a feeling from inside. <coughs> and also because a person can be tempted by shaitan or fooled by shaitan to think that actually what I'm doing is a good deed. How can shaitan come to me while I'm doing a good deed? And he's motivated by his ostentation, by people watching him, by people uh, admiring him, praising him. And this is a thing that actually motivates this person. So we can see how evil and you know, filthy this disease of ostentation is. And we can see some of the evil effects of it. We saw that 
uh, if we recap, one of the effects is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace him on the Day of Judgment. What about the effect on his deed? It will be null. It will be null and void. If the ostentation is more or equal to his intention uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what about if his intention is there for the sake of Allah, but it is, uh, it is stronger than his desire for being seen for his actions? Then the, there will be, his action will be deficient. The action will be deficient, his reward will be deficient and less, and also he'll be punished in the sight of Allah uh, on the Day of Judgment. Uh, with this, inshallah, we'll uh, finish today's episode. And in the next episode, we'll continue looking at the different levels of ostentation with respect to whether a person is showing off in the essence of the act of worship or whether he is showing off with regards to the qualities of his act of worship. Wa sallallahu sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.